And today we're going to be taking a look at this very interesting percentage meter. Now I got this meter at the electronics warehouse. Now that was pretty cool because it isn't a meter that reads voltage, it's a meter that reads percentage. So let's figure out how this meter works and how we can put it to use. In the process, I'll also explain a little bit about how analog meters are able to function properly. Let's get started. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. First of all, let's crack open this meter. Oh, I missed. So with this meter open, we should be able to see inside of it. And it looks pretty cool. As you can see, we have here an analog meter that reads in percentages. We have it go from 0 to 100% in the green range, and then all the way up to 125%. It's got a uh, back and some screws. Now, it's interesting on here. We can see that this was made by General Electric. It has its catalog number. Of course, it's made in the USA when things used to be made in the USA. And it's rated at 1 milliamp. So by it reading 1 milliamp, I assume that when 1 milliamp of current flows through this meter, then it will go all the way up to its max scale. So between 0 and 125 is between 0 and 1 milliamps. Let's see if we can take a peek inside this meter to more fully understand what is inside it and how it works. As you can see, after I have all the screws out and I pop open the back, it slides right off to reveal the innards, which look really cool. So this is the inside of the meter, and you can see that there's a pretty cool amount of components inside here. So first of all, we've got this giant metal thing. And right here is a magnet on the metal thing. This is just a hard magnet. And you can tell this isn't exactly the finest quality magnet because there's all these small little pits inside. But it's definitely magnetic because my uh, screwdriver is sticking to it. Now this magnet is housed in this little horseshoe shaped thing. And what this does is it allows the magnetic field to flow through this. It's a, just a stable magnetic flux. Now right here is where all the magic happens. We have a small little coil right here. Now in this coil that's attached to the needle, it is housed inside the magnet. And so when you put a small current on this coil, then that current opposes the magnetic field created by this magnet and this horseshoe shape, which means that the little needle will start moving across the magnet. But there's this little spring inside there. It looks like a little clock spring. So this little coil inside here with the clock spring on it is what is able to make the needle move. Now, it, this is pretty cool because there's also these wires that go from these two contact terminals. And those wires, first one goes up to this piece of metal, which goes through the spring to one end of the coil. And the second wire goes to the ground, which goes to the other end of the coil. So that's how you power the coil and you also let it move across very easily. So this is pretty cool and it's able just to freely move. I just think it's so cool how much work went into making this small meter function like it should. Alright, so now that we have this meter all figured out about how it works, let's see if we can find the electrical aspects that will make it go to 100% and not. So first of all, let's measure the resistance of it right now. You can see that we have a resistance of approximately 49 ohms. 48 ohms. 48.8 ohms. All right, so according to Ohm's law, which is E equals IR, or voltage equals current times resistance, we have E, which we don't know, equals I, which is 48.8 ohms, times R. No, we have R, which is 48.8 ohms, times I, which is current, and the max current for this meter is, of course, one milliamp, which is 0 0.001 amps because ohms law is all in amps or first units so this would be approximately e equals 0 0.048 so if we have 0 0.048 volts this meter would be at maximum level but no one's going to have 0.48 volts going through this coil when it wants to run. Let's say we wanted to put 10 volts to this coil and have a voltage between 0 and 10 volts correspond to a scale on here between 0 and 100%. To do that, we need to formulate a new equation where we have E, which is 10, equal 0 0.001 
which is I times R, which is 48.8 plus X, because we want to add two resist rates together. Because remember, in a series circuit, where we have two resistors, the current flowing through that circuit will be the same. So even if one of these resistors is 48 ohms and one of these resistors is 4 million ohms, the current flowing through this whole circuit is going to be the same through each resistor. So the approximate resistor we'd need for a 10 volt voltage would be approximately 99.51 uh, ohms. No, 91.51 ohms, which is approximately 10,000 ohms. If I take this 10k resistor and put it across my little meter, you should be able to see with this resistor in series how we can actually see that result and put 10 volts across it. We'll see 1 milliamp across it, and we'll also see it function properly. All right, with 0 volts across it, you can see that the needle is all the way at the bottom. If I crank up the voltage, to 50%, we have a voltage of approximately 4.73 volts, which is pretty correct. Now these resistors have different tolerances, so the voltage on here is not going to be precise to the meter. As we the voltage goes up very steadily, we can see that once it reaches 10 volts, the voltage on my Oh, that makes sense. The voltage on my power supply right now is 8.83 volts, while the voltage on here is at 100%. So once this reaches 10 volts, we should be at approximately 125. So as you can see, the tolerances are slightly off, because we're at 10.64 volts, and this meter is at 125. But this just goes to show that this works pretty perfectly. Now, one milliamp is not exact. It didn't go in any more detail. And so this thing could be a little more precise with the voltage and the resistor ratings because resistors also can be 10% off their resistance in both directions. You can buy specially made resistors that don't do that, but the colored band at the end of the resistor can specify how off it is. Since this is a gold banded resistor, that means it's 10% off. Which means that this 10K resistor can be 10% off that amount. And 10% off 10K is quite a bit. So, anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. So now we get this meter to work. This could be used in a variety of different projects that require measuring. And the best thing about this multimeter or little current meter is that you can use it in almost any circumstance. If you put the right resistor on here, this meter can be used to measure voltages up to thousands of volts, which is pretty cool to me. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to use a little meter. Now, you can just buy or find these meters anywhere, and they'll have a specified rating in milliamps of their maximum scale. And using some math, you can use this meter to measure almost any voltage. Or let's say you have a capacitor bank that's max charge is, uh, let's say, 1,000 volts, and you wanted to make sure that that meter had that exact charge on it, you can calculate that amount of voltage that needs to go across that meter in order for it to work. Now for 1000 volts, that would probably have to be like 1 mega ohm or something. I think exactly 1 mega ohm. But anyway, that's a very interesting use of a meter to measure some stuff. And I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.